smart, and beautiful. Law school student Lauren Giddings was only one test away from completing her dream. She was studying for the bar. Yeah, she was supposed to be studying like literally like 24 seven. She had told us, don't talk to me, I will be in the library. But no one in the law library has seen Lauren for days. Before long, campus friends grow frantic. The last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out and no one's heard from her since. Everyone knows this is not normal, including cops. When I arrived at the scene, what we were told at the time was that we had a missing person. And investigators are about to find frightening visual clues. Lauren Giddings never knew she was being stalked by a violent predator. When she woke up, saw him in the apartment where he had a mask on at the time. Everything seemed perfectly on track. I was proud of her. I mean, she was doing a lot. Lauren Giddings' parents and entire family couldn't have been more proud of the 27-year-old student who had just graduated from Mercer Law School in Macon, Georgia. Lauren going to college was huge. No one in our family had ever been to college. Lauren's younger sisters, Sarah and Caitlin, say despite living hundreds of miles away, her heart and soul were tied to her family in Maryland, where they all grew up. She always would come home for most holidays that she could, or we'd go there, and even when she wasn't, she like, called home every Sunday to talk to my grandmother that lives across the field. Lauren's studies at Mercer were nearly complete. She was only prepping to take the bar exam while living in an apartment right across from her college. But despite her keen mind, there was something Lauren was clueless about. Someone was watching her every move. She never mentioned being in fear for her safety. One trip home, and I think it was a year before she had mentioned like sometimes when she came home, she felt like things had been moved around or someone had been in her apartment. Busy with her law life, Lauren didn't think much about the curious incident. But was this popular and talented student unknowingly becoming someone's prey? She's as nice as can be. I mean, very personable, very much a people person. Fellow graduate Stephen McDaniel tells our Macon affiliate WGXA he knew her well. He also attended Mercer and lived across the street from the law school. Stephen had reportedly asked her on a date. Lauren declined because she had been dating someone else. Talk to me about the guy she was dating. David is his name. They had been dating for a few years at that point before she even started law school. So they had broken up at some point and then gotten back together. But now a busy weekend had come and gone, and strangely, Lauren was suddenly nowhere to be found. Lauren was my neighbor. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. Had Lauren just disappeared? Her family was not overly concerned. She already told them she would be studying 24-7 for the bar exam. Throughout the week leading up to Wednesday, I had called, emailed, and texted her. But it was nothing serious, so when she didn't respond, I never thought anything weird of it. It was just something that I never really needed an answer to. But Lauren's friends at the school were already looking for answers. One of them contacted police who came to the apartment. Seeing no signs of a break-in, they left. On Wednesday, one of her friends called me and asked me if I had talked to Lauren because she said I called her phone was dead. So of course I immediately picked up the phone and called and her phone was dead. And I did think that was weird. Lauren had now been missing for four days. On campus, Stephen McDaniel was one of those who joined in the search for his missing friend. The only thing we can think is that maybe she went out running and someone snatched her. And Caitlin's worries about her sister were now deepening by the minute. I had called her boyfriend. I had called friends in Atlanta, friends here. Um, called hospitals in the area searching for her. When did you realize something was wrong? When I woke up that morning, um, I came down the steps and Caitlin was here and she just said Lauren was missing. In desperation, Caitlin asked a friend to use a hidden key, getting access to Lauren's apartment. And she went in, called me back, said that all of her stuff was there, purse, keys, the car was still up front, wallet, you know, school ID. The alarm bells were now deafening. I hung up with her and called my uncle, who was a DC policeman, and just told him, like, there's, you know, everything I knew. And he said, tell her to go outside, shut the door, and call 911 and say they have to come right now. They did, but with their arrival, this case was about to take a dramatic turn. There was no witness, 
It was just a matter of interviewing anybody who lived on, at that complex or anybody who was associated with Lauren. Up next, a friend who seemed filled with worry and his own questions. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I am we're, we don't know where she is. Is now being asked for answers after cops make a shocking discovery. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. 